So let's let's get this right here. I'm gonna go a little bit faster, uh, 1.25 speed because you know we don't have all day. This to be a place that brings spiritual connection. This may look like an average religious gathering, but this is no ordinary church service. This is the Acid Truth Folk Assembly, known simply as the AFA, a fringe heathen group that mandates their members have Northern European heritage, a whites-only church in 21st century America. They represent a disturbing trend in contemporary white nationalism, the co-opting of heathen symbols and myths to promote racial purity and fears of a white genocide. We must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. those living nearby especially black lives color, matter this sent a disturbing message people of color we're all Christian color and lady and gentlemen live a few lady ladies and gentlemen lady. lady thank you for having me yes. if it was a bunch of people that came in and said hey we're we're satanist and we're going to be worshiping satan there would be all kinds of outcry and uproar and i think these people that come in and they say you know hey whites only we hate interracial we you know interracial things shouldn't fly and it's kind of like you know you have some people protest but at the end of the day you know they're there the fact that interracial so that's a, just a bad term we're all, there's one race, human. That's it. On the on the charts, my wife and I, we've done it for a while now, you know, that race. And we'll put other and we'll write human. Or I'll just do other or something else. I'm not Caucasian. I'm not white. I'm not whatever. Now, I have ancestry back however long. But the problem with people when they do this is they only go back so far. You know, they only go back 50 years, 100 years, 200 years, something like that. How do you know how far back you go? Nobody ever goes back to Adam and Eve or Noah and his wife. Like, why? Well, because they don't really want to think about it. Because we want to just kind of, you know, talk about it. We want to pretend like America was the only racist country. The only one who had slavery. When everybody had slavery. And slavery, sadly, there are many statistics, I don't have them offhand, that say there's more slaves now than there was at the height of antebellum slavery in the 18th and 19th century. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about it. Why? Why? Because it's not convenient. It's not politically motivating. It's not, it doesn't get any buzz, clicky stuff. It's a problem. It's a problem. Now with this, with this, well, that's weird freeze frame. Um, would this man be upset about Satanists? He's saying yes. So is he against Satanists then? This guy? So you're not, you're not tolerant of Satanists? You're anti you're totally against a whites-only church, even though they're a temple. Then it's not a church. It's not even remotely Christian. Stop it. Stop it, Guardian. You liar. Stop it. But this guy's discriminating against Satanists. Should we discriminate against Satanists? As the world, we shouldn't. You shouldn't. As a Christian, I would. I should say you should stop worshiping Satan. <laughs> even if, they, you know, they probably don't really worship Satan. They just worship sin. They don't actually even believe in a supernatural generally anyway that sort of racism isn't um looked at the way that it should like this this cancer that can mm -hmm. can kill this isn't a we just want to worship in peace I mean, cancer that can kill what about abortion that actually kills like hundreds of babies every day thousands really and a lot of times they're black babies dark skin more melanated babies because of you know xyz reason doesn't talk about that. Now, again, I know this is about a church and the community, blah, blah, blah. But that's the silliness and the hypocrisy of the left, especially the left. The right does it too. But the left, because they claim to be so, you know, squishy and soft and, oh, you know, emotionally, whatever. And yet they're not. They care about justice. No, you don't. You don't care about justice at all. You don't care about the unborn. You don't care about small children. You don't care about the elderly. You care about people in their 20s and 30s, and that's about it. And only people who believe and are motivated like you want them to believe and are motivated. That's it. Ideology. Do you have any fears about your daughter growing up in this area? It's uncomfortable that Let's keep going. Called uncomfortable. parents worship together and celebrate their European heritage. Despite their whites-only policy during ceremonies, they did allow me to go inside to see the church. Notice the revelation there. Their whites-only policy during ceremonies. She didn't say they can't go in. In fact, this girl, more melanated girl, gal, probably in her late 20s, early 30s, goes in. 
are these people rat racist? If they were racist, they wouldn't even talk to her. Like, it's just, it's so dumb. It's just dumb. And the, and again, the leftist ideal doesn't get called out nearly enough because the media is run by a bunch of leftists. So is Hollywood. Most of politics. All, all of, almost all of academia. There's a high 80, 90, 95% just massive, you know, seesaw teeter-totter just sitting like this. They don't care about open dialogue. They don't care about having freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of press. They don't care about these things. Not at all. They don't, they don't, they, not at all. They think they're right and therefore that's it. And it's like, okay, but you're not right. Folkish imagery and myths from a bygone Viking era to romanticize white European heritage and the importance of its preservation. For them, that preservation involves the exclusion of people that look like me. On uh, any given Sunday, I couldn't just come in and try to become a member. Uh, no, you wouldn't be able to come in and just join. There is a membership process that is required in order to be part of the assembly. So the requirements to be part of the Azure Folk Assembly is you have to be of Native European descent because we are considered a folk religion. A lot of people will call us white supremacists, which is not true. A lot of people will call us racist. We're not racist. Um, we're not out here trying to take over anything. We're here to gather together to call our brothers and sisters who are called to this religion. We want them to have a place to go where they can they can do those things and they can save those traditions and save that culture. Do you think with this emphasis on race and white heritage that it attracts people that believe in white supremacy and practice those ideals to this church then? This church is not a political movement. It is a church. You know, we focus on... on no, it's not. It's not a church. Not even close. Do you mean anything that would be considered white supremacy? No. I mean, I, I guess I don't... I don't know why people would be coming to a church for a it's not a church but that clear okay so again this gal is perturbed at the preservation of western european descent people would she be this way if this were a far off tribe in peru a bunch of peruvians in northern minnesota doing their thing no a hundred percent no. Would she be upset if this were people from some tiny country in Africa? There's actually a country inside South Africa. You look at it, it's like a little dot. If they were all from here, would she be upset about that? No. And if there was a reporter who was natively from Ireland, for example, or say Sweden, these people, Viking, Norse people, and it was reversed, that lady, that reporter, would be seen as the racist. So how is this lady with more melanin not the racist, and these people are the racist? Or are they both racist? Or neither racist? Like, <laughs> listen, again, audience, listen. I want, that's, that's why this is here. That's why I'm here. To, to drag their feet over. And pull their feet over to the fire of the gospel, the fire of common sense, the fire of reality, and say, look, you're not being fair at all. Not at all. Talking about a church, talking about a last whites only church. I mean, even if this were all true, and if this was just like a standard Baptist church in the SBC, say that it was. It's not. But say that it was. It's literally the last one out of hundreds of thousands of churches. America's not racist Newsflash, bing, ding, 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 ding. Not racist, not even close. But, you know, having one church that focuses on people when they say they're not even racist. So they don't say they're racist. And this lady wants to join a church. If she walked into my church and wanted to join some morning, I wouldn't allow her to join. I don't know who this lady is. And guess what? It has nothing to do with how much melanin she has. She also wouldn't be able to join any other church I've been to, not just the church I pastor. Why? Because nobody knows who she is. Are you a Christian? What's your name? Where are you from? Tell us a little bit about yourself. And most importantly, tell us who Jesus is. Who's Jesus? Some moral teacher? Oh, I don't believe in Jesus, she might say. Oh, he's my savior. He's my Lord. I've repented and believed. I've confessed my sin. And I live nearby and I would like to be part of this local assembly. Oh, okay, great. Sounds good. Have you been baptized? Go from there, right? That's what we would do. But, no. 
Last White's only church. Not a church. It's a temple. He clashes with the vision of the original founder, Stephen McNallan, who has consistently drawn on white nationalist rhetoric since the group's founding in 1994. I will defend my race. I will fight for my race. Primarily There's only one race, sir. But I will only fight one. Literally, if I have to, the existence of my people is not negotiable. This explicitly political messaging was co-opted by white nationalists in Charlottesville, where shields covered in Norse symbology were displayed. Something that unites us all is that we believe that white heritage and white culture is something that's vastly important and worth fighting for. And by Jake and Jilly, otherwise known as the QAnon shaman, a capital insurrectionist. In 2017, okay. Matthew Flavel took over as the group's national leader. He the AFA's messaging, a collective of local protesters formed the Murdoch Area Alliance Against Hate. Victoria Goulamond is one of its co-founders. Do you think the people of Murdoch came together to oppose this church? Do you think it was a general connecting point? No, I think it fractured Murdoch. Um, there are definitely people who silently oppose it. I think the vast majority Alliance of Murdoch didn't have anything hate. to do with it. But they did not like that they had to be held accountable for their silence on these issues. Murdoch didn't suddenly become racist because the Azatru Folk Assembly arrived. There have been systems of oppression and racism that have listen to all that critical theory just gooing out of her mouth systems of oppression systems of hate Ooh. do you believe in god do you believe there is a transcendent reality do you believe there is a lawgiver and thus we should obey listen i'm not for hate if you didn't already notice uh if that didn't already did your first time watching a video if you've made it this far please like and subscribe and share it really would help me out. But if you've already done that, continue watching. I think we're going to pause here. We're going to stop. I'm going to put the full video uh, link in the description. This is one of the main reasons why I do this channel. Because, and I know I've already said it, because there's so much just stuff spouted out, one-sided stuff. They basically create straw men. These people are racist. Well, hey, we're not racist, they say. I don't know if they are or not. That's irrelevant. If they are, in an actual classical sense of hating people based on their nationality, their skin color, what language they speak, that sort of thing, that's racist, right? Just like it's racist, quote unquote, to hate me based on where I'm from. Because just like you, I didn't have any decision on how my skin looks, my blue eyes, or my brown hair. And if I want to preserve my heritage, just like if you want to preserve your heritage or these people, is that wrong? And why is it wrong? Notice they don't say this is wrong or right and this is because. They just say, oh, we're against hate. We're against dis uh, discrimination. For what? How? Why? What does that even mean? What are you talking about? According to whom? According to what law? Acts 17. See if I can locate it here quickly. Paul in the Areopagus, this is a very famous apologetic message. Uh, he's there. He's talking to people who are not believers. They don't have any understanding of the God of the Hebrews, um, the Ten Commandments, none of that. It says verse 16 in chapter 17. Now, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw the city was full of idols. He reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happen to be there. This is new, the, the new marketplace, by the way. So drop a comment. Let me know if you disagree or if you think it's whatever or whatever. Just talk back. It generates good conversation if you completely, 100% disagree. Um, let me know. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers are conversed with him. What does this babbler wish to say, they said. Drop down a little bit more. Verse 22, so Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Man of Athens, I perceive that you are very religious. For I passed through and observed objects of your worship. I found also an altar to the unknown God. So there's multiple gods, right? And it says over here and this one and Jupiter and Uranus and this and this and this. Nike, Saturn, whatever. I know those are Greek and Roman gods anyway. You get the idea. Unknown God. The God who made the world, verse 24, and everything in it, this is the distinction between God, the actual God, and every other false deity. Whether it's imaginary or demonic, there's, that's the two options. You either make it up or demonic. These people in this video are worshiping either demons or their own imaginations. That's it. 
and they should repent. There's people later on in the video that are uh, basically the same, but they're more quote unquote inclusive because inclusivity is all the rage. That's, that's the bar of acceptance and rejection, I guess. That's it. The God who made heaven and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth. Okay, God is not just Lord of some things. He's Lord of heaven, which is everything, and then earth. Okay, everything else besides earth. Paralleling some of the language from Genesis 1. Does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything. God is self-sustaining. He doesn't need anything. (sighs) As though he needed anything. Since he himself gives to all mankind life, breath, and everything. So God gave you even the phone or the computer you're holding. Your breath. The taste buds on your mouth. How you've drunk your coffee, your bagel, your toast. Maybe you didn't eat breakfast. Even those tiny little things, even the gift of sleep, the bed that you have, everything comes from the creator. He made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined their allotted periods and boundaries in their dwelling places. That they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, and yet he is not far from each one of us. Listen to how not only evangelistic that is, but that's so encompassing. God made everything. He created everything. He gives everything. Every every good and perfect gift, James says, coming down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variation. Nothing changes. No shifting shadow. He made from one man every nation of mankind. One man. So Adam and Eve, they're there. And then the, obviously uh, um, the flood wipes out. And then Babel, everybody supposed to go over after the flood. No, they come back together at Babel. God disperses their languages. That's the only explanation for languages, by the way. There's no other scientific explanation for different languages at all. There's a few kind of babblings, but they don't really talk about it because they don't have an answer. It's kind of embarrassing, really. They don't... My mind's just like... It's just... Anyway, all over the place. Point is, God made everything. He made you. He made me. There's one race, human, not white, not black, not whatever, not this, not that, not yellow, not purple, not green. Human. We're human. And it's obvious. It's so abundantly obvious that these superficial things called melanin and maybe your hair's thicker, thinner, darker, lighter, whatever. These are all incredibly superficial. Nobody looks at a brown cow and a black cow and is like, oh man, look at those different races of cows. I wonder if they taste the same on the hamburger. Yeah, they do. Duh. Look at that pig. He's got black and white spots, and that one's kind of pink. I don't know if I like that black and white spot cow, pig, whatever. I want the bacon from the pink one. You wouldn't be able to tell. The bacon will still be tasty. This went a little longer. Thanks for sticking around if you still are here with me. Acts 17, great chapter. Go read it. Call out this nonsense. Call out the nonsense that these people in the leftist, especially the media, have this narrative. They're wrong. They're abundantly wrong. They're they're wrong. I mean, this story alone, there's multiple wrong things. And then their assumptions going in are wrong. The people that they're talking to are wrong. I mean, this whole thing is just a dumpster fire, really, of just wrongness. That's why I'm here. That's why we're doing this. Descriptions in the, uh, or the videos in the description. Until next time, be against the world for the sake of the world, okay?